It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG271QG. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel. There are also button labels here on the front of the bottom bezel. The first button, if you press that, it's a source select button so it cycles either HDMI or DisplayPort. The left arrow, which is the next button, allows you to adjust the volume of the integrated speakers or um, it's going to say anything to connect to the 3.5mm headphone jack but for memory I don't think there is one on this monitor. The right arrow allows you to control the ULMB, ultra low motion blur, um, or toggle that on or off, which I'll come on to in a little bit. Next there is a menu button which will open the main OSD menu and then there's a power button. There's also a power LED indicator which glows a, a gentle white when the monitor is on or amber when the monitor is on standby. So the main menu is a bit more cut down compared to many AOC monitors and that's fairly typical for a G-Sync monitor actually. Some of the features um, are usually absent from G-Sync monitors. And the first thing I'm going to do is just adjust the timeout period so I can actually talk about the video, uh, sorry, talk about the OSD in the video without the uh, OSD automatically closing, which can get very annoying. So the first menu is luminance, and that allows you to change basic parameters such as contrast, brightness, there's something called game colour which is essentially a saturation function, a bit like NVIDIA Digital Vibrance, but built into the monitor. And I know some BenQ monitors have a similar sort of vibrancy setting. So if you increase this, it essentially oversaturates colours. It makes them more saturated than they, uh, than they should be. And just, just for an extreme example, I've got it at 200 there. And I know some people like a more saturated look, but bear in mind that you decrease the shade range as well because what you're doing is you're pulling shades closer to the edge of the colour gamut without actually expanding the colour gamut itself so you do lose a lot of shade variety by doing that the monitor has perfectly vivid and accurate look with this set to 100 which is the default so there's really no need to use this if you're after a nice appealing image but you know you can tweak it if you want to and you can also lower it to reduce saturation levels if you so desire and if you reduce it enough it essentially becomes monochrome which is kind of cool but uh, not really very useful for gaming um, so I'll just reset that to the default of 100 there's shadow control which has a few different settings um, three in fact, three different levels zero which is off the default one, two, and three. This is a bit like BenQ's Black Equalizer. It's a gamma enhancement function. I'll just open the Legom uh, Black Levels test so I can um, show you. Thanks, Google. Very useful of you. So normally, these blocks are quite distinct from one another. They've got pretty much more or less appropriate brightness as they should look. If you increase the shadow control, they become lighter, more visible. The point in shadow control is so that things are more visible in dark areas. In games, for example, enemies would be more visible. So at the expense of accuracy and giving a bit of a flooded look in places, you can get more detail in the game if that's what you want. There's a gamma setting, um, three different gamma settings, in fact. Gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 3 explored in the review. Also explored in the review is the overdrive setting. There are various different settings there. Off, weak, light, medium and strong. I'd recommend medium as I do in the review and that's the uh, default mode. Next there's colour setup. That has a low blue light function which is explored in the review and you can change that between 0 and 100 with 100 being the strongest low blue light effect which is particularly good for relaxing evening viewing for example. There is a colour temperature setting, there are various presets, such as warm, which is the default one, normal, which quite strangely is not the default one and never is on AOC monitors, despite being called normal. There's cool, sRGB, 
and user. And, and again, these are explored in more detail in the review, but the user one allows you to manually adjust the red, green, and blue color channels. It's OSD setup, and that allows you to change the language that the OSD is displayed in, change the timeout period, which is what I did near the start of this video, which is a time in seconds after which the OSD will automatically um, remove itself from the screen, automatically close. Or you can press the source select button a few times to exit it manually if you prefer. You can adjust the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen. You can adjust the transparency, the transparency level of the OSD. So you can have it more or less transparent. It's not very obvious with that background, but it's making it a bit more transparent there. Yeah, I think you get the idea. Break reminder, so after an hour, this will put a message on the screen saying if you're using the monitor for an hour, maybe you should take a break. And if you choose to ignore the message or just want to get rid of the message for whatever, you just press one of the buttons and it'll just go away for another hour. Um, there is extra, and that allows you to reset everything to the factory defaults. There's an overclock function which allows you to unlock a 165Hz refresh rate mode on the monitor because it's a 144Hz panel overclockable to 165Hz. It, uh, as in the written review, you can overclock it to 165Hz. And there's a, I mean, it's, you know, it's a native capability of the monitor. You shouldn't have any problems at all doing that. I certainly didn't in the review on my NVIDIA GTX 1070. Deep sleep mode. This is a required for the highest level of Energy Star compliance of the monitor. It's something lots of monitors will just have by default. And if you leave this on, sometimes when the computer goes to sleep and you resume the uh, computer from its sleep state, so you want to wake it up, sometimes the monitor will stay on standby and actually won't wake up properly. So if you have deep sleep off, it uses marginally more power um, and, I mean, if you're talking like fractions of a watt here, really, um, I mean, I haven't measured it myself, but my understanding is it's really not much of a difference. But it will mean that if you do send your computer to sleep, the monitor should wake up no problem um, when you want to resume operation. And finally, on the extra menu, there's ULMB. And I'm just going to set the monitor to one of the refresh rates that supports ULMB, 120 hertz, 100 hertz or 85 hertz. I'll pick 120 hertz. So I'll be able to just show you an extra option which will appear once you've got ULMB enabled. So I've now enabled ULMB, except the monitor is not at the correct refresh rate yet. Now ULMB has enabled itself automatically because I was using it last time I was in 120 hertz. Um, you can see at the bottom there, uh, it says resolution. 120 hertz, which is the refresh rate, and ULMB because it's using ultra low motion blur at the moment. You might be able to notice a bit of flickering on the camera. Again, I export ULMB in the review, so I'm not going to talk about that now, but I just wanted to show you that you can change the pulse width as well. Once you've actually got ULMB enabled, you can change the pulse width between uh, and, uh, sorry, this uh, I should have mentioned that pulse width is explored in the written review as well, so I'm not going to repeat myself in this video. But you can change that between um, 10 and 100 in increments of 1. And also, this will give you access to that button there, which just toggles your LMB on or off. So now I've got it off, you see it doesn't say ULMB at the bottom there. If I change the monitor to a refresh rate that's a, um, it's a bit higher and then enable G-Sync on the monitor, um, sorry in the NVIDIA control panel even, I should hopefully be able to show you that the monitor will actually say G-Sync as well. So there you see it now says G-Sync. So it's in G-Sync operating mode. Unlike some monitors, it doesn't have a sort of, it won't show you a dynamic 
changing refresh rate um, to match the frame rate if you're in G-Sync, if that makes sense. And it doesn't give you any indication that G-Sync is active and what exactly it's doing in terms of the power LED. The only thing is that it'll say G-Sync there. So that's really what you've got to look out for. Um, I think that's all there is to it. So it's a fairly simplified OSD. Certainly a bit more cut back compared to some AOC monitors. That was the AOC AG271QG's OSD menu system.